dreams we learn in the Quran and Sunnah can occur from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they can occur from shaitan and they can occur from your own imagination. We said dreams are of three types. Number one, dreams of your imagination. In Arabic, this is called hadithun nafs. Comes from your imagination. So for example, one of us is wanting a very fancy car. You want to buy the latest model of the Jaguar or the Mercedes or something, right? You're thinking about it, daydreaming. You go to sleep, lo and behold, you're driving that car. Okay, this is your hadithun nafs. This is your imagination. And scientists say, this is not from scholars, but scientists say, scientists study dreams, right? There are a special group of scientists who study dreams. I find this very tickling that mashallah, if they fall asleep on the job, they're the only group of people that can say we're working while we, while we fall asleep. So there are scientists who study dreams. These scientists, they tell us that this type of dream occurs every night. There is a phase in our sleep when it's called REM, rapid eye movement, there's a phase in our sleep every single night where everybody dreams. Now the sign of this dream, you all know it. When you wake up, the dream is absolutely fresh, right? But then within five seconds, what happens? It's gone. That type of dream has nothing to do with good or bad. It's your own imagination. The second type of dream, it is called in Arabic, hulum. And hulum is an evil dream. In English, we call it a nightmare. And these types of dreams are from shaitan. And the sign of this dream is that it terrifies you. You see something evil, something disgusting. You see your loved one die a miserable death. You see yourself in a car accident. They're irritating. Why? Because you're a Muslim. Or even if you're not a Muslim, but non-Muslims have nightmares as well. But this is the shayateen playing with you at your expense. And these types of dreams are never, ever, ever true. Nobody should believe this dream. Nobody should believe nightmares. And our Prophet ﷺ said that nightmare should not be told to anybody. What is the sign of this type of dream? You wake up terrified. In the nightmares, you have to reject them because there is no truth, not an element of truth in them. Zero. And if you follow it and believe it, shaitan is the one who will be the winner. A nightmare, the Prophet ﷺ said, if you wake up with that type of nightmare, you seek refuge in shaitan. Say, A'udhu Billahi min shaitan rajim And you're allowed to spit on the left hand side as you do this. And the spit that the Prophet ﷺ talked about is a spit where the noise is made but nothing comes out. <laughs> like that. It's called nafath. And that is to expel shaitan from you. And say, A'udhu Billahi min shaitan rajim And also the Prophet ﷺ said, Whatever side you're on, turn to the other side. Why? Because shaitan while he's teasing you, he is around you or sitting on you. So when you say, A'udhu Billah, and you turn around, he has to flee and run away. And the Prophet ﷺ said, if it's really bad, then even stand up and pray to Raka'at to seek refuge in shaitan and to establish that relationship with Allah. Whatever you do, you don't tell anybody, not your loved ones, not your spouse, not your friends, nobody. These types of dreams, you leave them. Also, by the way, dreams of a vulgar nature, wet dreams, these are also from shaitan. So the first type was what? Hadithun nafs. The second type, nightmares from shaitan. The third type, this leaves the third type. The third type is mubashirat, or also called in Arabic, ru'ya. And ru'ya is a vision from Allah. It is a, a positive dream. And no dream from Allah will cause you to awake in a frightened state. You will not wake up terrified, or else it wouldn't be a mubashir, would it? What does mubashir mean? From Bashir, from Bashara. What does Mubashir mean? Glad tidings, good news, right? Something optimistic. Or even if it's not positive, it will be a factual statement. It will be something true and not something terrifying. Now, what is the sign of this type of dream? You will wake up remembering the dream vividly. So it's not Hadithun Nafs. And you will wake up not in a terrified state. When these two conditions are met, it is very possible, very likely that it is a Mubashir. Sometimes you wake up in a positive state because you saw something positive. And sometimes you wake up in a neutral state. You're not scared and you're not happy, but you might be confused. What did I see? But you're never going to wake up terrified. If you wake up terrified, it's not from Allah. It's from, from shaitan. In one hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, a dream that has not been interpreted is like a bird flying above you. As soon as someone interprets it, the bird will fall down. Meaning, done deal. You only want the person to interpret the dream who is the most qualified to do so. You may tell people, yes, your loved ones, but the loved ones who are not knowledgeable of dream interpretation should be quiet. You should only go to those whom you trust, 
that are knowledgeable to interpret the dreams. This is known by experience. So in the community, there might be a person, mashallah, he's muttaqi, he's praying five times a day. He's And by the way, generally speaking, the more righteous you are, the more likely you will have this, this knowledge, right? This is a general rule of thumb. The closer you are to Allah, the more this knowledge will just be innate in you. It just comes to you. It just, it is natural to you. It comes out like this. So you go to those people and they interpret the dream and you will find out whether that dream is true or not. So somebody sees a dream, the dream interpreter tells him, this dream means that you will pass the exam you are studying for. Lo and behold, he passes the exam, right? Or this dream means that such and such will happen. Lo and behold, it happens. So we, from experience, we learn that this person, mashallah, he knows dream interpretation. However, nobody's dream interpretation can be 100% accurate other than the prophets of Allah. It's only the prophets of Allah who have 100% accurate dream interpretations. If Abu Bakr as-Siddiq could not fully master the science of dream interpretation, no other human being after the prophets can. So what this means is that even the greatest dream interpreter it's not 100% solid. And of course, dream interpretations are not, one of the reasons they are not book knowledge is because symbols vary from society to culture to place. And therefore you cannot just open up a book and look up what this symbol means. To be, to give you a funny example, let's say, okay? What a coconut symbolizes to a person living in a desert island is not the same as what it symbolizes to a person living in the city. Just give you a ridiculous example, okay? For that person, the coconut symbolizes life water, food. For me, a coconut does not symbolize any of those things. Okay, it's a very different thing. Or for example, in our culture, Indian Pakistan, a white elephant symbolizes something. Those of us who are from there, we know that, right? A white elephant symbolizes something. Now, if an American sees a white elephant, it doesn't symbolize to him what it symbolizes to people of other cultures. So the point being, symbols will be relevant to the culture of the people because Allah is communicating to him. So there's no concept of a universal dictionary of dreams, a universal encyclopedia of dreams. Rather, dreams are very personal and you go to the local people who know you, who know your background and you inform your dreams and then if they know, they will interpret it. In intro, a very interesting hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, dreams from Allah are the only thing that remains of prophethood and they represent one 46th of prophethood, very precise fraction. To be a prophet, you need 46 things. One of them is true dreams. Those other 45, the door has been shut. They're not gonna happen anymore in mankind. Maybe Jibreel coming down is one of them. Seeing the angels is another. We don't know, we don't know the list. There are 46 things that prophets, all of them do. All 45 have been shut for everybody till the day of judgment, except one door that's been left open. That is the door of good dreams.